Hello, this is Perry Keller from Agilent Technologies. Uh, I am the Memory Applications and Standards Program Manager, as well as uh, our lead for our application, Digital Applications and Standards Program overall. Uh, today I'm going to provide a briefing for you on universal flash storage, a sort of a how-to guide uh, on how to understand the spec uh, and create products and bring them to market using UFS. First, let me describe what is UFS and, and more importantly, why is UFS. Uh, universal flash storage, uh, which, which is called UFS, is really intended to, to serve as the next generation of mobile storage. That would be mass storage for mobile devices. Uh, it, it is intended to be the successor to the, the current uh, standard for embedded mass storage, which is the embedded multimedia card or EMMC. Uh, in a sense, the, the goal behind UFS is to be able to provide SSD class performance for the next generation of mobile devices. Uh, building on the, the heritage uh, of EMMC uh, to be built directly into uh, mobile devices. So let me talk now about what and why uh, UFS or Universal Flash Storage exists. Uh, UFS was really developed uh, to be serve as the next generation of, of mobile mass storage for uh, tablets, smartphones, and other kinds of embedded devices. Right now, uh, the embedded multimedia card uh, is the, the incumbent. It is the de facto standard for uh, persistent storage within all of these devices. So when you buy a phone uh, and it says it's got 16 gigabytes of internal storage, uh, that's almost always implemented using EMMC uh, designed right into the product. UFS is intended to replace that by providing uh, the best uh, learnings from the world of uh, SSD capability that's used in, in desktop systems now, uh, plus the low power and reliability of uh, EMMC in order to provide a smooth transition to the next generation of mobile systems so that you can get the performance of SSD class storage in the next generation of mobile devices. You, the motivation behind UFS uh, is, is really driven by the evolution of personal computing systems. So if you look at uh, sort of generations of personal computing, it starts way back with the IBM PC uh, in which you had a desktop computer uh, on, your, on your system. Most people have that today in their office. Uh, but over the, the last few years, we've increasingly seen those replaced by the second wave, uh, which would be laptops uh, and netbooks. Now the, the third wave is really taking hold with the use of tablets and increasingly powerful smartphones uh, to take over a lot of the functions with the always-on internet connectivity uh, that had been done by laptops uh, and before that by desktop systems. So uh, along with that transition, there's, there's a, an exponential explosion in uh, applications and, and diversity of use. You know, back in the, uh, in the days where you had uh, file servers talking to desktop computers, there might be uh, a few hundred applications, you know, and, and of course thousands of different users. Uh, as portability increased with laptop computers, the number of applications grew and, and you, you had millions of users. And, and now with the mobile systems, you're really going to have uh, millions of different apps and, and billions and billions of users. And so the, uh, the amount of compute power and communications infrastructure needed to support this third wave of personal computing uh, is significant. And, and UFS is going to be a key part of enabling that. So UFS uh, supports this third wave by providing a, a series of enhancements uh, beyond uh, EMMC. Uh, it uses the M5 physical layer, uh, which is getting strong adoption in the mobile industry, along with uh, Unipro. And in order to provide a, uh, a low power, uh, highly efficient communication structure that's optimized for mobile systems, uh, but still is running at very high speeds. 
which is needed by the multitasking uh, multimedia environment that, that the mobile systems will be providing. Um, and high energy efficiency. So M5 is really designed along with Unipro to be able to support uh, extremely aggressive power management which is essential for, for mobile systems. At the same time there have been decades of experience in the server world uh, using the SCSI protocol for management of mass storage efficiently in a multitasking environment. So even now you see on TV these ads about uh, oh now I can do two things at once on my uh, on my smartphone. Well in fact they've been doing multiple things behind the scenes for a long long time and one of the major advances in UFS utilizing the the SCSI protocol internally uh, is that it supports this kind of non-blocking multi-threaded access uh, to the memory array so that a, a single task or a single activity that you ask the, the, uh, the tablet or the phone to do won't cause everything else to stall or wait until that activity is done. So I've mentioned the UFSA here several different times. Uh, I'd like to spend a little time and just dig into exactly what is uh, the UFSA. Uh, the genesis of the Universal Flash Storage Association is really to enable UFS to be successful as a technology in the marketplace. Uh, and enable devices and hosts to be developed uh, that are successful. Uh, organizations like JEDEC and MIPI are technical organizations. They're the experts in actually defining the standards uh, and they also understand what the, uh, what the exact procedures should be in order to observe the behavior of a host or device uh, in order to, to see if it is consistent with the standard. But they don't manage any kind of a compliance program and they don't do marketing. They're not responsible for uh, creating any kind of enabling ecosystem. That's the responsibility of their members. So UFSA exists to fulfill those roles that really aren't part of JEDEX and, and MIPI's uh, responsibilities in order to make it easier and, and uh, allow people to successfully implement uh, UFS based products. So its primary missions are uh, to foster the development of the UFS uh, technology itself and, and promote UFS uh, as a viable technology uh, replacing EMMC, uh, help people understand what the advantages of, of UFS are going forward. Uh, it's, it's also responsible for developing enabling infrastructure um, such as organizing workshops and plug fests, uh, uh, putting together application uh, notes, application information, being able to uh, make people aware of how they can uh, implement uh, parts of UFS, either make or buy. Uh, a key part of the UFSA's role is in managing the compliance ecosystem uh, that, that executes the process that I just described. And, and linking that then to logo management, which is where marketing and, and those kinds of activities uh, come into play. The UFSA is independent of JEDEC and MIPI. If you're a JEDEC member, that doesn't make you a UFSA member. If you're a MIPI member, that doesn't make you a UFSA member, and vice versa. So the UFSA is, is an independent organization uh, that, that has its, its own membership, and uh, there are different levels of membership in the UFSA uh, that, can, that are appropriate to the different uh, kinds of value that the UFSA would add to, to each member organization. So the levels of membership in the UFSA uh, are basically three. The initial level is called an adopter member, and uh, this, is, this is the level that's required in order to uh, apply for a logo license. Uh, it's, it's also the least expensive membership and what it did, does is it gives uh, you access to all of the published uh, UFSA documents uh, once the board of directors uh, has approved them for publication. The next level above that is a contributor level and people who are contributors are eligible to participate in the various UFSA committees that develop these documents such as the compliance test uh, specification, um, 
the marketing committee uh, and, and other parts of the UFSA that, uh, that exist so that you can be involved in the development of, of these uh, UFSA standards and get earlier information than adopters uh, on how they're progressing and also have influence about uh, how things like the compliance test or what kind of marketing or application enablement activities exist. The, the highest level membership is a board of directors level membership and uh, that is uh, basically the same cost as a contributor membership um, uh, but the board of directors would then have to, you'd have to apply for membership uh, to the board and the board would have to take a vote. Uh, one final note I want to make is, is that um, in order to be an authorized test center for UFS, you have to be at least a contributing member, um, and it's expected that you will be participating in the compliance committee activities of the UFSA.